during your PhD at MIT, you, uh, you worked on autonomous microgrids. So this is a solution to helping people who lack access to electricity. So today there are about 900 million people on the planet that do not have electricity. And so it sounds like these autonomous microgrids that you're involved in the development of could play a role in ameliorating that situation. And I know you have some experience with this hands-on because you ran field tests in rural India. So um, I think you're the right person to ask, how do microgrids work and how could they solve this electrification problem? Yeah, so uh, when we started off on, on this problem, there were 1.2 billion people who did not have access to electricity. I don't think we actually got, got, it, got it down to 900 million, but there has been a lot of work in trying to electrify the areas which don't have access to electricity. Mm -hmm. um, microgrids in general were uh, basically an interconnection of uh, electric systems, which, which could help provide uh, electricity in a very low cost manner uh, to, uh, to the areas where uh, the autonomous piece came about because we were uh, not only identifying what were the, the loads and the sources, so that means the solar panels or what were the kind of um, uh, uh, Loads such as you know lights or fans, etc., that were connected onto the system automatically, and then helping control uh, what is called demand response, like ha helping control the demand in such a way that we can best utilize the resources, such that we maximize uh, the use of uh, electricity. And and the cool thing about these systems were that they they didn't need did not need any planning. So, for example, if you look at the the grid system in, in the U.S. or any developed world, you you know it has gone through a lot of planning. That's because it was done back in the day where you needed all the planning to really structure everything. But could you have, uh, with the current technology, could you have self-learning grids where you could understand what was happening, who, who was getting connected, what source was getting connected, and then re-architect itself to provide the best electricity or, or uh, uh, and at a low cost? Uh, the interesting thing is this actually uh, not only is a problem uh, in, in, in the develop, develop world, but it got used in uh, in Australia and other areas as well because um, microgrids are more important, uh, it, you know, especially after you've seen the California fires and electricity mm. shortage, etc. So you have grids which are which can be disconnected from the the main grid and then self function and uh, and self regulate uh, the power there as well. So for uh, so at Ulink where we were, uh, you know, not only was I doing my PhD, but we were also commercializing this technology and uh, and working with um, uh, both uh, de developed world uh, uh, power systems as well, but also in the developing world where we helped uh, electrify some villages where we would go and install the systems and and help provide the electricity there and and prove uh, uh, basically prove, provide a proof point on how low electricity can can cost if you actually did not have to uh, build for that much robustness but you actually built for uh, maximizing the the time that the load was available